Hi, I'm Lita Leepin. And I'm Jim Gordon. And welcome to another edition of Our City Tonight. Well, folks, if you are a regular viewer of the show, and we hope you are, we uh, have been filming our show over the last four or five months at Hedra Restaurant in the Exchange Hotel. Well, we're at their sister restaurant right now, just around the corner, Aloe Bistro in the La Soleil Hotel. We're on the second floor, Lita. Activity downstairs, busy lunch hour on this Thursday afternoon. Yes, and we've got lots to do, so let's get right to Our City Tonight. This segment is brought to you by BritBox, the streaming service from BBC and ITV, offering unmissable British entertainment in Canada and the U.S. Well, it is time for another BritBox segment. It has been a, uh, a few months since we've uh, done one. I think it was just after uh, Christmas, Lita. Uh, and it's great because spring brings more great programming, or as we like to call it, binge programming. And the first uh, selection we're going to talk about, I was really excited to see this as were you, because what's great about this documentary is that it is written and narrated by its subject, and that is Joan Collins. This one is called This is Joan Collins and Lita. She truly is, I mean, I'm, I'm a film TV critic for many years. She really is one of the last, if not the last, of the great Hollywood era from the 40s and the 50s. Yeah, she was one of the stars and she came up from that uh, glamour time right into, as most people know her, from Dynasty. Yeah. Uh, what an interesting story though. She talks about her loves and giving up on men at one point in her life <laughs> yeah, she, after four marriages. Yeah, found, found, she's found happiness she finally, I think. She did. It is, it's fascinating yeah. though. Really, really didn't know this side of Joan Collins. Yeah, and what's interesting too is she is, because it's her kind of bearing her soul and she's written it and she she narrates it on camera and yeah, off. Which is so, it's so hilarious Yeah, it actually. is. It's a different, <laughs> but it's really honest and it's self-deprecating and I my one takeaway or the first of many was that this woman after a 70 year career, what a survivor and mm -hmm. things happen to come along. Uh, as you said, Dynasty, she's, she's like filing unemployment insurance, yeah. not but long before Dynasty comes on her lap, but also, uh, also the you know the, the one movie you pointed out, like the Killer Ants, and she's doing the the bitch <laughs> and the star. The yeah. <laughs> I mean, and yeah, it's just it's so honest, and and she she really was a trailblazer too, in terms of what she did as a woman back then. Yeah, she stayed strong too, and she didn't let herself go down that tunnel. Uh, she remains a very very strong woman. And seeing the Dynasty stuff again, that just was a a great third act for her. So if you like her, if you don't know much about her, we both give that a, a really big thumbs up. Lita, our next selection, the, the title got me right away. Oh, definitely. Uh, and it, uh, From an Agatha Christie book written in the early 30s, uh, released on both sides of the Atlantic. This is called Why Didn't They Ask Evans? This yes, <laughs> interesting. In, well, actually, it gets to it um, well, partway through the actual film. Uh, series. There's three episodes, and uh, I, I wish there was more, but they yeah. really did pack it in. Yeah. Um, they developed the characters. I know you love the two leads. I love the leads. We should say this is uh, was adapted for the screen again, and I think best of all by Hugh Laurie mm -hmm. of House and a million other projects. Who appears in it? Yeah, he does <laughs> actually. Got a great, great role. The banter is witty. The cast is great. It also includes Emma Thompson, Jim Broadbent, Joshua James, Hugh Laurie, as we mentioned. Hugh's in it, as Lita said. Uh, what's great though, what this really hinges on and hangs on are our two leads, Will Poulter and Lucy Boynton. Uh, Will was, I last saw him in uh, Dope Sick with Michael uh, Keaton, which is fabulous. And Lucy was last seen in Bohemian Rhapsody as Freddie Mercury's uh, best friend, kind of love, whatever. Yeah. But these two are just fabulous together. It's a murder mystery set in the mid 30s. It takes place in Wales and, um, I want to say in Wales and uh, Hampshire. And it really starts out with a man at the bottom of a cliff, and Will is uh, Bobby Jones, and the last words this dying man says is, why didn't they ask Evans? It all comes together at the end, and uh, oh, satisfyingly so, I yeah. have to say. Some murder mysteries are like, what? Leaving all the pieces hanging, but it was great. It's a great romp. Uh, can I say that, actually? Yeah, yeah no, you can. It no, it's wonderful. It's, uh, and um, yeah, 
Great detective fiction by yeah. Agatha Christie. Yeah, I think this was probably her, her, her most fun. I mean, yeah. we're talking about murder, but it's it's <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And as I said, the two leads are spectacular. They're just, it's like Nick and Nora Charles, if you remember the Thin Man in that series. Love this. Look for Why Didn't They Ask Evans. Well, the next series that we enjoyed was Murder in Provence. And... Uh, that was great. Three 90-minute episodes, uh, and who doesn't love to watch the beautiful scenery in Provence? It takes place in X. I had to look that up how, how to, to say pronounce that, that. X, it although is. the characters say it many, many times. University town in uh, Provence. Um, it stars Roger Allen. He is a judge who is, uh, it's interesting the- The legal uh, system the legal is very, system, yeah, Yes, yeah. thank you. Um, that the judge is actually out there solving murders and his partner who is a criminologist, she actually uh, partners with him and that's actually, I should say, in the second episode. Yeah, Maybe I'm yeah. not giving away anything No, but, but the there. good thing is that they're, they're, they're a couple. Yes. And so they find a way to work together and drink a lot of wine together yeah. and live together, so. <laughs> and, and you do get some of the deeper stories of this couple. They've got a great chemistry and it's real life. They talk about some of the real life problems. Uh, there's some fun uh, characters that uh, co-star with them, in, including an American singing actress. Um, That's right, What yes. is her name again? Oh, she's amazing. Uh, Kiala Jones Settle. Okay, and, uh, yeah, what an right. interesting character. Murder in Provence, it's available now. Well, the next one, how interesting, is uh, the RHS Chelsea Flower Show, and that was formerly known as the Great Spring Show. Uh, it's a garden show that is held in Chelsea every year. Uh, so the creme de la creme of garden designers get together and basically showcase their talents, right from the Canada wilds, as they yeah, say. Yeah, they said that, yeah. The lavender like fields of Provence. Yep, uh, China, right into everything. Eastern, yeah. you know, the Chinese gardens. And the, the hosts are pretty casual about it. They're obviously experts as well, and you see some yeah. celebrities and everything. But this is just, as I said, to say this is a gardening show is like saying the Super Bowl is just another football game. Oh, it's this is This is big so time stuff. Beautiful. So if you're into that, if you want to learn a little bit more, I did find it fascinating, I'll be honest with you. RHS Chelsea Flower Show. Uh, it is available now too. Well, Jim, with our few seconds left, you've got one more that you wanted to mention. I wanted to mention this show because it's another one of those fish out of water shows. And this show's been on British television and throughout the world since 2011. The cast has changed quite a lot, but it hasn't really damaged the show. Kind of the way MASH went through during the 70s and 80s, a whole bunch of different changes, but it didn't kill the show. I'm talking about Death in Paradise. Season 11 is available now. Uh, as I said, this is a fish out of water. It started way back then, and the, the premise has really pretty much remained the same. Uh, as a detective from London, he's in the islands. He's on the uh, uh, fictitious island um, in the Caribbean, uh, St. Marie, and it's just all about solving crimes. I used to write for a show like this where you're going to beautiful tropical oasis, but crimes are happening everywhere. But uh, I don't want to give away too much because uh, season 10 ended on a dramatic cliffhanger. And there was also a, uh, a Christmas special. So if you're behind, I don't want to give away too much, but season 11, season 11, and this is big time for a British show to be on this long. Uh, season 11 of Death in Paradise is available now. Uh, more information, check out BritBox online and we'll have all BritBox information in our closing credits. And that is this edition of the BritBox Moments. This segment was brought to you by BritBox, the streaming service from BBC and ITV offering unmissable streaming British entertainment in Canada and the U.S. This segment is sponsored by the Richmond Sentinel, providing news, entertainment, and human interest stories in print and online. It's a long day living in Reseda. There's a freeway running right through the yard. And I'm a bad boy Cause I don't even miss her I'm a bad boy For breaking her heart Cause I'm free They are multi-million selling Canadian singer-songwriters. This is their first ever album collaboration. It's called He Sang, She Sang. It is a collection of fresh takes on beloved classics, also has some new material. You are looking at a classic right there. It's their take of Tommy Petty's Free Fallen. It is a great pleasure to welcome Amy Sky and welcome back her husband, Mark Jordan, to our city tonight. How are you guys? Good, Jim. Good to be here. 
Good to see you. You too, guys. Okay, we got you in different cities. Amy, I'm going to start with you. You're in Florida. Um, let's talk a bit about, you guys have both had long, successful careers. You're written and produced uh, with a lot of people, Rod Stewart, Diana Ross, Chicago, Olivia Newton-John. You've also had your own solo careers. I got to ask, why did it take this long to bring you two together? Was it a happy marriage you didn't want to play with or the kids at home? You take it from there, Amy, you go first. Yeah, pretty much. We just, we love each other and we wanted to stay married, so. <laughs> <laughs> and what about now you, you have kids and I, I believe you kind of into that empty nest stage now. Did that make it easier to want to do the album? Absolutely, yeah. You know, part of the reason that we did, we've done very little work um, performing together over the years is like family obligations. You know, we when you when you make a record, you got to tour together, and then much easier if we could tour. You know, sort of tag team it. One of us go out at a time instead of being on the road. But now our kids uh, don't live at home; they don't even live in Canada anymore, so we can do whatever we want. <laughs> That's great, uh, Mark. You're in Toronto, where you were last time we talked to you. Um, we had Colin James on the show not long ago, and Lita and I got talking to him about song selection. And with something like this, this is just this album is just full of classics like Smokey Robinson's uh, "Ooh Baby Baby," Willie Nelson's "Always on My Mind," Bonnie Raitt, and a song that, for my money, is pound for pound one of the best romantic songs ever. Beach Boys, "God Only Knows." How do you guys select the classics, and then how did you select your own stuff to add to this great collection? Yeah, Mark, you go. Well yeah, you know, um, when Amy and I drive in the car, uh, we always uh, listen to music, and and uh, especially this last trip, eh? We we uh, when we drive we drive down to Florida sometimes, and uh, and uh, we have these long periods of time where we just listen to music, and um, and the stuff that sticks, and the stuff that we love to hear over and over again, and the stuff that you know suits our voices. And and uh, you can and the and the songs you can make uh, uh, duets out of as well because you can't do that with every song it doesn't make sense but but uh, so it, it takes a bit of curating but uh, we've we've had a lot of years to do it and we've been working on this record for you know we've actually been working on it for about four years right maybe more well we we started the recording process. Four years. No, we actually recorded the first song seven years ago. One of our first trips from Florida to Toronto, we stopped in Nashville and did some recording. Uh, Free Falling was one of the first things we cut because we're both influenced by the singer songwriters of the 70s. Um, but for the rest of the record, we wanted to reflect a melding of our influences. So um, when we did the session with um, You Were Always On My Mind and God Only Knows, it also in Nashville with the fabulous Matt Rollins, we kind of hit that marriage of um, the jazz harmonies and the acoustic instrumentation that really sort of then helped us inform the original songs we were going to do. Talking with uh, Amy Skye and uh, Mark Jordan, husband and wife, their new album, He Sang, She Sang. Uh, first time they've done this together. Guys, um, everybody that we interview, uh, musician, um, singer, songwriters, one of the questions we have to ask is, times change, I could be talking to you about something now and then it could change two months from now, but are, are we hoping to get back on tour this summer? Something compared to normal pre-COVID? Yeah, I think we have a tour booked uh, for the fall, right, Amy? Is it, is yeah, well, Mark is actually touring with Lunch at Allen's uh, uh, in, in June. And then our actual tour to support this album is gonna be November. It's a long way off, but we had, this is the third group of dates we we booked and then the promoters just got nervous. So, um, you know, if things uh, keep moving in the right direction, we'll be on the road in, in Ontario in uh, November and then probably in 2023, the rest of Canada. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, I'm going to hold you to being uh, guests in studio where we always shoot uh, if you're in Vancouver. Uh, later this year or early uh, next year. It's it's a great pleasure. Uh, Mark, of course, I, I've grown up with your music and Amy, I've been listening to you for a number of decades. I don't want to say that you guys have both been around a long time, but it's great to have you both together and congratulations on this long overdue uh, collaboration. He sang, she sang. We'll have all Mark and Amy's uh, information and about the new album in our closing credits. Amy in Florida, Mark in Toronto, thanks for joining us on Our City Tonight. Thanks, Thanks, Jim. Cheers.
This segment was sponsored by the Richmond Sentinel, providing news, entertainment, and human interest stories in print and online. He was born and raised on beautiful Vancouver Island, in fact, the North Island. Um, and I was first drawn to this man's unique photography and videography because I too grew up in that area. He has a real talent for capturing the natural beauty of this area. Our City Tonight welcomes wildlife photographer Brian Texmo. Hello. <laughs> Hi, thanks for joining us today. Oh my God, I, I am so, so impressed with your work. Um, it honestly looks like you've been doing this for so many years. I know you've been doing it just over a year. Tell us a little bit about, well, first I want to say to the audience, you are an electrician by trade. Um, in fact, yes. automation and process control technician. <laughs> Total yep. mouthful there. How did you become so accomplished at photography in such a short time? Um, luckily, we live in a world today where we can pretty much just hop online and Google or YouTube anything. So for me, I just spent as much time as I could researching, reading books, and then YouTube was so helpful just to go online and look up how to work with cameras, how to, you know, proper compositions, what you're looking for for your settings, and of course your editing process, which kind of sets you apart and helps you develop your own style that kind of sticks out amongst others. Wow, now you photographed animals that I didn't even know were in the North Island and I grew up there. Uh, you have access to such absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, natural territory. Do you have any favorite subjects or captures? Um, so believe it or not, one of my favorite things to photograph is deer and elk, which is abundant up here. But just the fact that um, I love to go mountain climbing and go out in the middle of nowhere, way up high up in the Alpines and the mountain ranges. And that's where you find a lot of those elk and deer and to be able to capture them in their own natural habitat, way away from roads where, where people normally see them, it's just a lot of fun to me and something that's always spoken to me. Perfect, now you were drawn to photography kind of out of a necessity. You wanted to do something, you, you had an illness and then you decided that I'm gonna learn this, I'm gonna be able to capture my, my son's beginning of his journey of his life as well and um, you also, your photographs are now award-winning. Um, in particular, I want to point out the barred owl sunbathing for the <clears throat> BCSBCA. Tell us a little bit about how that came about. Yeah, so, I mean, luckily enough, hey, I got a great chance to, to watch an owl. And anytime I can watch an owl, I'm always extremely grateful just because they're such cool owls, they're animals to watch. And um, so I took this photo, I knew I really liked it, and I noticed that there was a, a, a contest coming up for SBCA. Um, I had some friends just uh, tag me on it on Facebook and said, hey, you should enter your photographs. And I was like, I don't know, I might not, I don't know if I can do that. But I did, and it ended up coming to third place, and I was really thankful for that, and it gave me a boost of confidence. And yeah, it's just, a, it, they were awesome. And then, you know, they put it all over the place for people to see, and that's, that's very cool to see. I just made me very grateful that uh, my work was out there for others to see. Well, we're grateful that it's out there too. And I'm so glad that I happened upon it from mutual friends as well as your family that I know. Um, yeah. Your self-taught, your uh, North Island Wild, I believe, is your tag. And you've got a Facebook, Instagram and TikTok account. I'm encouraging everybody to take a look at your beautiful work. Any, uh, any projects coming up as we wrap up here? Um, so my direction right now is mostly I'm going to be getting a lot into the videography of things. I really like that aspect of it. So I'm going to spend a lot of time with my camera, taking video, uh, building some videos for the North Island for tourism to showcase the North Island. So I do have a project that I'm working on with a close friend, Ronnie Harvey, to uh, basically showcase everywhere from basically Campbell River North about all the natural beauty up here and kind of like the untamed wild side of things. Wonderful. Well, thanks for joining us today. Uh, just absolutely gorgeous work. I can't believe you've only been Thank doing you. this for a it. year. Um, all of Brian's contact information will be in the rolling credits, and I encourage everybody to take a look at North Island Wild, uh, all those accounts. Thanks, Brian. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. She has been on nearly 80 cruises, 47 countries. I would imagine that uh, those numbers have gone up a little bit since we last talked to our cruise experts. She's known as the official cruise guru. Joining us once again from just west of Toronto, it's Diane Tierney. Di, how are you? 
I'm fine. Thank you so much for inviting me on. Uh, Lita and I have tried to get you on a number of times since uh, your last appearance last summer, but the rules and regulations and lockdowns and restrictions kept changing. So we finally got you back. And what's uh, a coincidence, too, is that last week you and I were both part of media contingents on cruise ships, and we were both literally two ships passing in the night. We we're both doing cruises along the West Coast. I have to say, Di, you're the expert, but it's been about three years since I've been on one. I was impressed with what my cruise ship was doing in terms of safety and the cleanliness. Not one COVID case, touch wood, won't always be the case. How was yours? Same. Um, the protocols are so great now that they're keeping everyone safe and the cruise lines really know what they're doing with um, making sure people are vaccinated, negative tested, uh, what to do if someone does get COVID. But there's just been not that many cases now on board just because you know vaccination levels are high. And uh, even the children who um, previously could get vaxxed, but now the five to 11 year olds are being vaxxed. So cruise ships are running at about 95% vaccination rates and everyone has to have a negative test before they get on board. So it's really working well. Di, would you say, um, because I actually called you before I went on my cruise because we were leaving at the same time. And I, you were really helpful to kind of say to me, you've got to do this and this and this, and oh, by the way, get extra COVID insurance. I'm finding that a number of people that I talk to that don't have a friend like you, it can be confusing. It's because you have had you had to do things last fall, test-wise and other protocols that you don't have to do now. Briefly walk us through what we're doing now. If I'm going on a cruise next week or one of our viewers is going on a cruise this month, what are they looking at doing? Well, the um, yeah, protocols have changed dramatically. I cruised, you know, six, uh, six months ago, and I was tested every day on one of the ships. Um, but now the things have been easing and relaxing. So you still have to um, show your vaccination certificate. You still have to upload a negative test. They may even uh, test you at the terminal, and you have to have insurance. Uh, luckily, the insurance situation has improved greatly, and you can get insurance. I highly re recommend that you choose insurance that isn't just travel medical but is also quarantine covered so some are giving a per diem per day if you do get quarantined in a hotel um I, you know choose that i think it's well worth it and the rates are actually quite affordable yeah i gotta say di compared to what you were paying last fall for that extra COVID insurance and compared to what i paid last week night and day but i'm glad you brought that up because i didn't know people have a travel insurance we all have it or most of us do anyway we travel most people don't realize that that doesn't include the COVID restrictions and quarantining. So I'm glad to hear that you're saying that. Hey, um, with the time we've got left, let's talk about some of the great cruises that you've been on since we last chatted. And, and what are you looking forward to this spring and summer? So I've been on four new ships very recently. Uh, I have the weight gain to show for it. <laughs> <laughs> I was on uh, Royal Caribbean's Odyssey of the Seas, their newest uh, quantum class ship, uh, Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas, which is the biggest cruise ship in the world and carries 7,000 passengers, as well as MSC Seashore, which is very glamorous. If there's any ship that could be a runway model, she would be it, as well as the Discovery Princess, which just launched out of LA uh, recently. and uh, she. She is such a classy, quiet, uh, lovely ship for a relaxing uh, vacation on. And she is doing California coast, Mexico, and then eventually Alaska. Uh, sounds great. I got to tell you, I was very happy to be on a, a cruise again. I've done a lot of media trips on cruises over the last uh, 10, 12 years, not as many as you. Hey, uh, we should let people know as well, you got one heck of a great website if you want to get more details on what's going on out there. It's official cruiseguru.com. Uh, you can also check out Diane on Instagram. She does a lot of videos. I don't think you do enough videos, but anyway, with you in them. But it's great to have you on the show again, Diane. And if you have any questions for Diane, of course, you can reach her on our website. Diane Tierney, thank you, our cruise expert. We appreciate you updating us, and we'll get you back on again this summer. Thank you so much. Okay, Diane, talk soon. Well, we hope you're enjoying this uh, edition of Our City Tonight. Reminder, as we always like to do, it's to let you know you can follow us on social media at Our City Tonight. Okay, let's go downstairs to the main level where the restaurant is. Lita's standing with some friends of ours from Alouette and what looks like some great food. Lita. Well, thanks, Jim, and uh, we are down here at Alouette French Bistro on the first floor where the main stuff happens and we're super excited because there is a new menu items that we haven't actually tried yet. 
chef. Tell us what is in front of us and it's driving us crazy. Yeah, so there is a few, again, more classic to the French cuisine as we kind of conceptualize. Uh, right here uh, in the center is our trout almondine, essentially taking the classic pre flavor profile of a uh, trout with almonds and brown butter um, and having uh, just a little bit of vegetable garnish there, keeping it light, keeping it fresh. Um, again, just homage to the French classic with uh, brown butter sauce. And then over here is our sharing uh, bone-in dry-aged ribeye with roasted bone marrow and our classic béarnaise and uh, red wine uh, peppercorn jus, um, our, our steak frites, a shareable version of it. And then our new dessert that we're very excited about as well, it's our, we're calling it a lark bar, which essentially is our raspberry uh, curd with a chocolate ganache and um, almond chiffon. Uh, again, going back to the seasonal uh, product of berries, and that's kind of where we're leaning this whole dish towards. Oh my God, you guys have hit a home run once again. Mark, what inspired um, the restaurant to have these particular dishes? We really, really wanted something just that someone would come and they want their favorite dishes. Right, so they come in and they have these beautiful share plates, and now that all restrictions are being loosened, right, Yay. we can kind of come in at tables, we can share again. It's uh, amazing. We can have uh, all our friends back together, and yeah, and come down for your favorite dish. Do I have to share this with Jim? So, no, 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 no. This this is just for us. Though. Just for us. <laughs> okay. Well, absolutely wonderful. Uh, your food here has consistently been so great, and I always want to say because we were talking a little bit, realizing that you're not even quite a year old, you no. survived one of the worst times to ever open a restaurant and look at you guys, you're flying, you were super busy earlier on today for breakfast, lunch and your dinners, it's hard to get in here sometimes, so make a reservation and you definitely want to come down and see these amazing guys. Awesome, thanks Dan. <laughs> Well, Jim, it's that time, time to say goodbye. Yeah, before we leave, I want to thank uh, Claire and Mark and the rest of the staff here at uh, Alouette French Bistro. Yes. I like the French out at the beginning here at Les Olay Hotel on Hornby Street. Come check this great place out. I'm Jim Gordon. And I'm Lita Leapins. We'll see you on the next edition of Our City Tonight. Don't forget to check out past episodes and individual interviews, all on the Our City Tonight YouTube channel. Outdoor wear for Jim and Lita, provided by Helly Hansen, alive since 1877. The Richmond Sentinel, providing news, entertainment, and human interest stories in print and online.